Hi, everybody, and welcome to our broadcast of Brain Function Series from the Togetherness Media Los Angeles. Uh, this is Mohamed Nami, Medical Cognitive Neuroscientist and Sleep Disorders Fellow. Uh, and I, again, feel so fortunate for this opportunity to be talking to you in this episode, whereby we will be talking about another part of our discussions and other key issues in uh, neuromedicine and the brain science and, and the related disorders and predicaments. And we're gonna focus on my area of interest. I hope that would be also uh, to some levels at, uh, of your interest. Of course, that'll be important and at some level interesting for all of us. And that is sleep, because we all know that we are you know, spending uh, in a sleep in a, during a certain amount of our time over 24 hours, you know, literally like one third of a lifetime is spent sleep. And we, we know that sleep has got different structure uh, features, structural features. We have different stages in sleep. And this is structure of the sleep is just formed like sleep cycles. So when this uh, macro structure of a sleep and the timing, I mean, the quantity, from one side and the quality from the other side is not actually there appropriately, then we might be expend, expecting a range of issues in terms of our um, health in general, our state of bodily health, and not only that, but our mental health and our neurological aptitude or cognitive aptitude, that we might be expecting something uh, to, to emerge, which is untoward our health and well being. So that's why the, the key issue of sleep and sleep health is really of value. Although in, in today's state of practice, not only many doctors underestimate this issue and they are not really getting into that. They are not sharing the significance ideas about the significance of this with their patients or people that they are referring to them uh, from one side. Also at the public level, this, this issue, I mean, the, the importance of health in your sleep has not been really attached it to. So why is that important? Because uh, we know that the range of sleep problems is quite diverse. And now we're talking about more than 80 types of sleep disorders, according to the latest classifications of international uh, uh, classification for sleep disorders. We have like 84 types of sleep predicaments. And some of them are bodily sleep issues. I mean, that we got some problem with our breathing. Apparently we, we have tooth grinding, we have issues with our body movements and such and such, but some other aspects are, are predominantly neurological or psychobehavioral. We know that we have insomnia, but insomnia is sometimes a psychological and sometimes physiological. Sometimes that is combined. So we, we're talking about psychophysiological insomnia. And we, we have around like 14 different types of insomnia. Interesting, right? So to cut it very concise and just to take that very straight, we need to know that we have uh, the, the, the terminology, which is important to clearly understand about, and that's the key term sleep medicine. And that is an interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary approach to the idea of sleep health. So cardiologists, pulmonologists, those who are uh, neurologists or doctors for the brain and, and mental health uh, you know, issues, psychiatrists, psychologists, or, or those people who are, um, you know, I mean, those doctors who are specializing in, in, in immune system or, or endocrine system, they are pretty much concerned about the, the range of uh, problems and the related consequences that we might be having during our sleep and the reflection of those problems in our daytime function. So in a proper sleep almost always equals to in a proper diurnal function or daytime function. So our personal capacity or personal functionality or personal productivity is greatly uh, um, being hampered when we do not experience a proper quality sleep, right? 
And uh, under the, the, the umbrella term of sleep medicine, we got two specific subcategories that they are pretty much of importance, that they are, they are actually my area of focus in terms of research and, and my colleagues and, and, and uh, our team, not only in our country, but across the world, we're working on different aspects of the impact of a, a range of sleep problems on our neurological health, on our brain health, on our psychological aptitude and cognitive aptitude, if you like. So number one is sleep neurology, and number two is behavioral sleep disorders. So these two subcategories are pretty much of importance that they are salient areas of discussions in sleep medicine. What does the first talk about, the, the sleep neurology? When we have inappropriate and, uh, I mean, unrefreshing and hampered sleep quality, and maybe when, once the macrostructure or microstructure of a sleep are negatively affected, they are hampered, then we might be expecting a range of neurological problems to be fostered. I mean, uh, we, 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 can't, we can expect the expedited uh, expression of those symptoms as we age. For example, dementia, memory problems. The, the risk of stroke would be even at some occasions that will be like tripled when we are not experiencing quality of sleep or we have some issues like, like sleep disorder, breathing. And then also uh, we might be expecting some issues with the musculoskeletal system. We might be expecting some problems with, uh, uh, I mean, refractoriness or, or, or problem in responding to medications or non-medicinal therapies in terms of epileptic disorders or epilepsy. So a range of neurological disorders are kind of very, very closely related to, to a disordered sleep. And when we have disordered sleep, these issues may emerge from one side. From another side, when we have neurological problems, these neurological problems can per se hamper the quality of sleep and also shorten the duration of sleep. The quantity of sleep would be negatively affected as well. So this is sleep neurology. Also, we can be talking about another paradigm and that is behavioral sleep medicine or BSM, which is another very important category of uh, scientific research and clinical practice. People have depression, anxiety, PTSD, phobias, they have obsessive compulsive disorders, they have issues with their cognition, memory, uh, learning, or their verbal, their decision making, or, or reasoning and planning. And these are getting worse day by day. They go to doctors, they're receiving medications, but the condition is not getting improved. So when, when things, when the issues, when the predicaments and, and mental health are not classically responding to the mainstream of treatment, which is pharmacological treatment, or when we're using the non-pharmaceutical approaches, still we do not get a good response, then we need to look into those sleep. So in many occasions, inappropriate sleep would result in aggravation or emergence of the, of the mental health issues or psychiatric or psychological issues, or psychological problems. So this is number one. Again, this is a two-way street. So when we have this psychobehavioral issues and they are and they are left and they are left untreated, then they can negatively hamper the quality and quantity of sleep. And then we might be trapped in a vicious cycle. You understand? And by this, what I'm just trying to highlight is the significance and importance of sleep-related predicaments, sleep-related issues and their impact, a reflection of those problems on our mental health, on our neurological health, on our psychological aptitude, and cognitive health and cognitive fitness. So whatever the case is, if we wanna have a good state of mental health and functionality and brain and bodily function, one key pillar and one key uh, you know, uh, fundaments here is a proper sleep. So in any case, if we're suffering from an appropriate sleep and the sleep is unrefreshing, so we, we, we are unrested in the morning and we will feel uh, have some affective disorders, we just you know lose our temper very easily, we have issues with our stress management or temper control, and we have uh, problems with our mood, we feel down or depressed and we, and uh, we, we just, you know, have poor impulse control, then we got to see a doctor 
And we need to also specifically share with the psychiatrist or the mental health practitioner, we, we gotta be sharing with them about the complaints of our sleep in, in details. And by that, there might be a need for uh, polysomnography or sleep tests to find out about uh, a diverse uh, list of problems that could potentially be there. Because as I, as I probably mentioned, we got more than 80 types of sleep disorders. And it's important to realize what exact problem is already there and how we're going to treat the treat this problem specifically and expect a good therapeutic outcome. So let's stay pretty much cognizant about the salience and importance of the range of sleep problems. Let's pass on the tours. Let, let's let the other people know about the importance of that issue. If they have issues with their brain, with their mental function, and it's not getting resolved, or uh, despite all uh, the mainstream and a classic, uh, 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 you know, medications or therapeutic approaches, then we need to consult a sleep doctor. If we already specifically, and especially when we already complain about some sleep related problems. So that was a kind of message that I wanted to convey in our discussion. And, and I, I was actually looking for a block of time during the first season over the, the past 13 episodes to talk about this because the sleep idea is, is, has been my focus over the past 10, 15 years. I've always been fascinated about learning more about this area of research and clinical practice. And I hope I could have made this message crossed and uh, hopefully we'll be discussing about more ideas in the following seasons and further episodes. Thank you so much for turning in. And I hope to catch you later on. Mm -hmm.